Hello, today we're going to be talking about how to prevent capital gains tax on new or pre-construction by Ronald Poon Real Estate Group. Let's roll the intro. So here is a chart of the combined federal and provincial tax rates. So assuming, let's say, for example, you got a pre-construction for $350,000, and now it's $700,000. So that's pretty good, right? So it's very easy to have a capital gain of even $350,000. Because if you, know, you bought it for three fifty dollars and you sell it for seven hundred. dollars that's 350 and basically you're going to be at the highest tax bracket okay so there's three ways there's three things that can happen when you sell uh, a property you can get tax no capital gain which is the best scenario 0% on your on what you, on the appreciation okay or you can get tax capital gains which is not good because you have to take this full income in one year you can't spread it out over several years um, and that's going to be 26 percent. However, you can also get tax at business income, and that's the worst. That's going to be 53 percent. So, for example, half of 350, okay, 350 times 0.5, you're paying 175 of tax K. Now, 25 percent would be around 87 K. So this is way worse and way more important than HST. The most HST you can pay uh, that you can lose in terms of rebate for new construction is 30K. So um, capital gains is more important. So now let me go over for new or pre-construction how you can uh, get no capital gains, first of all. So to have tax-free capital gains, you need to qualify for principal residence exemption, PRE, okay? And there's no hard and strict rule. It says there needs to be personal occupancy for a short period of time, and that you have to have intention to make this your principal residence. So you can put the utilities in your name, you can put a driver's license, and do things like that, you know? Um, but so far, it's showing that CRA will settle for at least four months will be enough, but six, seven, eight, they'll review it. And you can probably get an accountant to get you out of this, but they say they're just trying to do this to get people to get pay more taxes. But four months should be enough and more than eight months for sure, pretty much for sure, at least as of uh, the research, um, you should be able to get the principal residence exemption if you live there at least eight months. Okay, by the way, you cannot have another property as principal residence. So if you already have a principal residence and you want to make this one your principal residence, your new construction, you need to live there eight months and your other property is no longer qualifying for the principal residence exemption unless you have a partner or kids who are over 18 that can take on that property as their principal residence. Otherwise, for those eight months, the appreciation during those eight months are, is taxable. It is called a deemed disposition of property. And then when you make it your principal residence again, that amount is taxable as capital gain. So let's say in January, you move into this for eight months. And then by August, there was no cap, maybe a little bit, like 10,000 of gain. Who knows uh, what the price is gonna, prices are going to go. Then you only have to pay out of that $10,000, um, you know, the capital gain on that, which is 25%. So you can see here it's 25%. But if it's not too much, it might give me 10% if you don't have any other income. Okay. So if you decide to rent out this property, um, if you rent it out for at least six months and then you sell it, you're gonna have capital gains, which is which is gonna be the 25%. However, if you rent it out for less than 18 months, okay. If you sell a rental property before 18 months of ownership, the CRA will uh, not count this as a capital gain and count this as regular income, which is taxed at 53%. So double of capital gain. So that's the worst. Okay. 
So you or your spouse or kids must ordinarily inhabit the property. And you might designate you must designate it in your tax returns and tax documents. Okay? And you must be on title. There must be a housing unit. So I hope you enjoyed the video today on how to pay less capital gain or prevent, especially prevent uh, the appreciation to count as business income for new and pre-construction. Take care.